Hi guys, welcome to Exim Tips. We will be looking at evaluate and conclude workshop today. So what do we actually need to do? So we need to provide our opinions by reasoning and we need to form an idea of the amount, of the numbers, of the values provided in the question. So in terms of the skills, this is AO3 skill, when an examiner might ask you to analyze, interpret, and evaluate scientific information. So we need to look at the ideas and the evidence for them. So include, that could be uh, included in relation to some issues or make a judgment or to reach conclusion or to even develop um, uh, your understanding of the conclusion. So let's have a look at a few examples here. So we've got first scenario, which is uh, the conclusion. So a student who looked at those results uh, say that they could not make a conclusion about the relationship between stage of development and metabolic rate. Okay, so um, use the information in the table to explain reasons why they were enabled to make conclusions okay so they weren't able to make conclusions on what on relationship and the development and metabolic stages so what's missing here okay so we've what we've got in table we've got stage uh, of development we've got a ratio and we've got the mean rate okay and some of them that doesn't even have information so in this situation, why can we not uh, use any uh, conclusions is because we don't have information, okay, what we've mentioned here. So they cannot compare all stages, okay, because, because we, we, we've got those as, uh, as, the, uh, as the X, as the adult, and there is no comparison, no idea of comparing those we cannot use any statistical test because uh, there is no standard deviation that we could use and it, if we don't have that we cannot measure if the results are significant or not okay so again what's missing here so we've got no information here okay so we cannot compare all those three stages and uh, because we don't uh, we don't have that we cannot do a statistical test okay so normally in terms of the conclusions about some results we will be looking at the statistics at the standard deviation in this situation if we had all information we're looking at the mean value so that's why we could use a t test right so scenario number two now we've got standard deviation so if we've got standard deviation we need to talk about this so i'm not going to read through all this question you can pause the video and you can read through the question i'm just going to look at the key information so we need to use information provided so it's all this text here and it's all the graph so firstly let's have a look at the graph so we've got the mean concentration of carbon monoxide in the inside the car we've got not smoking we've got smoking after five uh, for five minutes and smoking five minutes and uh, five minutes after smoking so uh, we've got another key here we've got open window we've got closed window and we've got standard deviation two standard deviations so that uh, uh, that shows us the mean includes over 95 percent of data and we've got the statement here that it is dangerous to smoke when a child is in the car. Higher levels of deadly toxins can build up even a short journey. And children breathe faster than adults, meaning they inhale more of the deadly toxins. So if you were reading through this all information, of course, we need to talk about standard deviation and we need to compare them. So if the standard deviation overlap there is not significant difference if they do not overlap there is a significant difference so you will want to include that in your answer also what's wrong with the statement you don't have any actually research done on the children so that's something that you would like to use in your uh, evaluation as well 
So if you're evaluating any statement, you could talk about uh, arguments for and arguments against. So let's have a look what, what could be for. Okay, so we've got significantly higher concentration of carbon monoxide with closed windows. So closed windows, there are those dark ones, yes, and we can see that. Any increase of carbon uh, monoxide could be dangerous. Yes, that's correct. So that's from the information. Significantly higher levels after uh, five minutes. Okay, so yes, we can, uh, we can see that. And then against. So in terms of the against, there is, uh, there is not significant difference with open windows. So open windows, okay, let's have a look at those. There is not significant difference because standard deviations overlap. So if you look at the overlaps, okay, but uh, again, there is no data on child breathing rates, which, which we've highlighted in that statement. Right, so let's have a look at the, on that scenario. So we've got another uh, using information, okay, to evaluate the conclusion. And conclusion says the scientists concluded that the stress uh, reduces the activity of Rubisco in plant leaves by affecting Rubisco activase. So let's have a look firstly what we've got here. We've got Rubisco, so that's the enzyme uh, involved in the light uh, independent reaction. And we've got Rubisco activase, okay, enzyme that activates Rubisco. Now we know its job. So this is all about Rubisco, and this is Rubisco activase, right? So Rubisco increases uh, uh, in the temperature, but Rubisco activase increases up to this point, okay, and then decreases. So use the information which we just described to come up uh, to evaluate the conclusion. So Rubisco activity increases with temperature. Tick. Okay, we we look at this. Rubisco activase activity decreases at high temperatures. Above that, uh, any any uh, temperature above 25 will be correct. We've seen that, and the results uh, suggest. The activase cannot affect uh, activity of Rubisco. Where is this coming from? It's coming from the fact that Rubisco is still active after this temperature, while Rubisco activase it's not. Okay, and then the rest of the information comes from from the text. So results are only for cotton. Okay, so that that that's what we've got here. It's only for the cotton plants. It's only for the isolated enzymes, okay, two of those here, and there is no statistics test, okay? So first three marking points you can all get by analyzing the graphs, so please do so. You, you, you can afford a minute looking at the information because that will bring your answers. So let's have a look at the other scenarios. So you've got, again, uh, a graph to show you the treatment uh, of the, each of the lengths of stem. So you've got no substance, we've got substance X, we've got substance X, X, and that is then cool to 4 degrees. And for all those treatments, we also got the mean number of roots provided here. So what's important here, where the lines are coming from, from analysis. So here we've got no substance. Here we've got the substance, but it's uh, cool to uh, 4 degrees. And looking at the table, 3, 4, and 5 looks quite similar, but 11 stands out. So it might be worth looking at that number 11. So the question is to use the diagram and the table. Uh, what can you conclude from treatments D and E about root growth? So root growth, okay looking at this table mainly here so what we can conclude here that d okay uh, substance x it's not actually required for the root growth we can conclude because we still have got five of those even so there is no substance x okay substance x will move through the uh, through the plant so we can conclude that we don't know if that goes through the form uh, or xylem yet and uh, E, 